So how much of a difference actually is there between a super budget gaming mouse that you can find on Amazon for like 15 bucks and something top tier like a Logitech G Pro Superlite? Because I'll be honest, uh, so far my testing has shown that, you know what, maybe there isn't actually that much of a difference in terms of, you know, the different price categories when it comes to the input lag and the build quality and the kind of performance of different gaming mice. Even in those really different price categories, uh, you know, performance is really quite similar. For example, if you take a look at the Razer Viper Mini, which you can buy these days for just $30. Uh, it is actually one of the best gaming mice that I've tested when it comes to input lag and the shape, the coating and the glides, all of that stuff is really solid as well. So how bad actually are those super cheap gaming mice that you can find on Amazon for like 10, 15 bucks? Well, I was wrong. They're actually really, really bad. A lot worse than I thought. Uh, so let's start with this one here. This is called the Dare You Victor. I bought this one on Amazon for $15 US. And on the surface, you know, it's not a terrible looking mouse and it seems to be modeled after Logitech's G403. It definitely feels very similar in the hand. The cable, unfortunately, is one of the worst that I felt though. Super, super thick, very heavy, not nice to play with at all. Speaking of which, the total weight of this mouse is over 90 grams. Other than that, the glides are kind of average, but all of the switches are actually not bad in terms of overall feel. The input lag on the switches though are pretty bad and so far they are the worst on this list, averaging 28 milliseconds of total delay. On the other hand, the sensor input lag, that is the total delay for mouse movement to be registered on screen, isn't actually that bad and does outperform some of the well-known wireless contenders. In terms of actually using the mouse in game though, this one actually did okay for a $15 oh, mouse. Baby. I mean, the big things here are that it's heavy, it has a thick cable and the sensor placement is a bit more forward than most mice that I've used, but that just takes some time to get used to. The next mouse that I tried though is a lot more terrifying. I mean, this thing again, straight from Amazon, $19 wireless, pretty cool, honeycomb shell, nice and lightweight. Uh, but the most horrifying thing here is how many people have actually bought this mouse. This thing has over 421 reviews on Amazon with an average rating of four out of five stars. So why is it so bad for $19? Well, take a look at this, the sensor input lag is so bad here that I needed to extend the x-axis on my graph a lot more than I thought I'd ever have to. 48 milliseconds of input lag for the sensor is just straight up a crime. The click input lag is a little bit less atrocious, but still pretty bad at over 28 milliseconds on average. But what's really concerning here is the insane standard deviation. That means that although we averaged 28 milliseconds for the click input delay, there were more than a few readings here that exceeded 50 milliseconds of input delay. Total weight comes in at 96 grams, which is a bit surprising seeing as this is advertised as a lightweight gaming mouse and even has a honeycomb shell. And yeah, compared to my 60 gram super light it feels like an absolute brick. Also the glides on this thing are super scratchy and will probably tear a hole right through your mouse pad within a week. Take a listen to this. We haven't even gotten to the worst part about this mouse, which is by far when it comes time to actually use this thing in game. Whenever you do any moderate to fast movement, the sensor just freaks out and stops tracking. So if you need to do a fast 180 or flick to an enemy, you literally can't do that. You'll just end up aiming at the sky or the floor for whatever reason. I tried every single DPI setting to try and give this thing the best chance that it had and it was still an issue. So honestly, I have no idea how this mouse is even allowed to exist let alone how it has four out of five stars on Amazon. In fact, the only way that you can get a kill with this mouse is if the enemy just somehow walks into your crosshair because aiming with this thing is absolutely horrible. Even playing with less mouse movement and only trying to use my wrist, sometimes my cursor would just continue to move even though I wasn't moving the mouse at all. So it's safe to say that the firmware and sensor on this thing are absolutely busted. There is no way in hell this thing is worth $20. The next wireless option on this list is a little bit better though, and that's the Dare You Gemini. And I was really looking forward to testing this one out because of the wireless transmission in gaming level. Millisecond transmission brings stable signal as wired mice do, please rest assured. 
Well, actually no. Average sensor input lag comes in at 25 milliseconds, which makes it a little slower than their own wired option, and click latency is about the same. For $40 US, it's a lot better than the previous wireless trash that we just had a look at, but it's starting to creep up towards some other well-known budget mice. The shape here is actually okay, pretty comfortable overall with some really nice side tapers, and to be honest, it fits my hand size and grip preference pretty well. For that reason, it was actually not that bad to game with, still hitting some nice one taps here and there, buttons feel okay, and same with the glides on the bottom. There's no getting past the fact that this thing is heavy AF though by today's standards. Total weight comes in at 105 grams. So if you play on a low sensitivity like myself, the sheer amount of momentum and inertia when flicking the mouse, it really makes me appreciate the ultra lightweight mice that we have today. Nothing could have prepared me for this next absolute abomination though from version tech. Just have a listen to this. For a grand total of $9 though on Amazon, I'm not really sure what I expected, but damn, this thing is atrocious. I also really like how they paracorded the cable to make it look like a nice, lightweight, flexible cable, but in reality, this thing is stiff AF. I mean, you could probably go rock climbing with this thing and you might even be 100% safe. It really feels that strong and rigid. It also has the spongiest side buttons that I've ever seen on a gaming mouse today. I mean, I'm not even sure how this amount of pre-travel is even possible, but hey, here it is. The main mouse buttons though are not too bad. The input lag of the switches though are absolutely horrendous, almost 40 milliseconds on average, which is by far the worst result that I've seen. So this company is likely using some super cheap mechanical switches paired with a debounce time of like 30 milliseconds. That way they don't have to deal with any units that get sent back for double clicking. The sensor input lag is pretty terrible as well, over 30 milliseconds here on average with a standard deviation which is huge. It's fair to say that the sensor and firmware that's being used here are absolute garbage, but it gets worse. Just like the Zayu Lang X3 wireless that we tested earlier, here during any fast mouse movement, the sensor will simply just stop tracking. The effect here is a little bit different though. The MCU on this mouse won't try and guess where you want to aim and point you immediately at the sky or the floor, although eventually that's where you will end up aiming. Mostly though, you will just not move in the direction that you had planned. This this is both frustrating and incredibly hilarious at the same time because I have never seen anything this bad. It's like the sensor just gets overloaded with information and has a complete mental breakdown. The only way to play with this thing is with really slow mouse movement and with wrist aiming only. Again, I'm just really amazed how this thing even exists on the market because let's face it, it is completely broken. This one though is really interesting because it's one that you guys actually recommended for me to check out and it's called the Deluxe M800. This one is $40 on Amazon wireless and it's based off of the Viper Mini, although it is a little bit bigger. And this one actually has a PAW3335 sensor. So since it's based off of the Viper Mini, just a little bit bigger, it does actually feel like a wireless Viper Mini. That is to say, it feels really good in the hand. And for me, I actually played okay with it. Buttons feel good too, and the glides are PTFE, so a bit better than average. And for a lot of people, this is going to be a pretty comfortable fit. Part of that is because the total weight comes in at just 7 72 grams, which is really impressive for a non-honeycomb wireless mouse in 2021. Sensor input lag results are about average and what you'd expect for a mid-range wireless gaming mouse in 2021. The click latency though is a lot worse than I was expecting and about 16 milliseconds slower than the Viper Mini that it's modeled after. I'm not sure what switches this mouse is using and as far as I can see, you can't lower the debounce delay and that is a real shame because otherwise it does seem like an okay budget wireless mouse. There is something up with the sensor as well. It doesn't feel as flawless as a lot of the top tier gaming mice out there. Sometimes I felt like my sensitivity was changing and overall it felt a little bit inconsistent. So there it is, a clear picture of what really separates the you know name brand gaming mice that we frequently review on the channel to the random no name, you know, really budget gaming mice that you might find on Amazon or eBay. Yeah, there is quite a big difference. Honestly, I was pretty surprised by how straight up unusual usable some of these gaming mice were. They likely appeal to really young kids who really don't know any better and just see 
see a cheap gaming mouse with cool lighting effects and for those kids I feel very very sorry. Now if you are in the market for a cheap gaming mouse $30 is about as low as I'd recommend going with really solid options out there like the Logitech G203, the Razer Viper Mini and with a bit more cash you can get something wireless like the G305. So hopefully this one was as fun for you as it was for me and down below in the description I will leave some links to gaming mice that I actually do recommend. As always guys a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.